Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a behind the scenes look into creating a website for an Atlanta-based startup called Rails. And if you're anything like I am, you love seeing other designers' processes in order to get ideas for tips and tricks to borrow and then try out in your own workflow. So today I will be pulling back the curtain and giving you a look into one of my most fun projects from last year. And the scope included a bit of everything. The main touch points that I will be talking through are strategy and context gathering, website structuring and copywriting, homepage design, and then full website, and in the case of this project, product animations. So let's dive in. All right, quick bit of context. So Rails is a startup that makes software to help logistics providers manage their finances much more easily. And they already had a basic brand, but it was my job to transform that into a website that really showed off who they are and how they help their customers. So the first step, of course, is all about gathering information. And I think that each designer likes to approach this a little bit differently, but what works for me is building out a document with a set of questions that touch on everything I feel I need in order to start forming their website and really understanding them as a business. Everything from the company's origin story to their audience, key product benefits, what success looks like 10 years from now. So I do have a go-to set of questions that I start with, but I always tweak it for each client or project just a little bit, adding or removing things based on what's relevant for them. So I won't show the clients actual answers for privacy, but here you can get a sense of everything I like to gather. So on top of that, for this project, I did a call with the client where they walked me through their product and screen shared their actual software. Tip, remember to record that call if you do one. Software products in particular are super dense and I referred back to this video a lot during this project, especially when it came time to create UI graphics and animations. So after this, of course, there are follow-up conversations and questions that come up here and there, but the kickoff questionnaire, and in this case, the product walkthrough, is really where I get the majority of the foundation I need to get going. And one last thing here, I always like to tell clients up front that this is the heaviest lift that they'll have to do the entire project. So I never want clients to see a long questionnaire and feel like they just had a big homework assignment dropped on them and get a sense of dread like the next month is going to be this massively time consuming effort for them. I really just like to reassure them that once we're past this early kind of knowledge transfer phase, their role will, will really shift to check-ins and feedback. Next up for this project was content structure and copywriting. So copywriting isn't included in the scope of every project, but it was for this one. And honestly, I prefer it this way because it gives me more control over the whole site strategy. And I kind of enjoy compiling the copy. I'm sort of weird like that, but to speed things up, I have my own set of templates that outline the essential content sections that most marketing websites, which is what I generally build, need to account for. And I have a specific version that's tailored to tech product showcase websites like this one. So just like in the kickoff document, I generally will tweak the website content template based on the client's industry, their specific goals and considerations. And I will often do some competitive research here to see if there's a certain type of information that their competitors are really leaning into. And I won't just blindly copy that, but I will consider whether it's something that would fit into our site strategy. So sometimes competitor research can just reveal patterns about what a certain type of audience expects to see or gaps that you can kind of help your client fill in. Then it's time to talk to AI. So I use AI to speed up the content creation process, but not to replace it entirely. What I do is I'll plug in the information that I gathered during kickoff 
I will define the tone of voice that we're going for, and I'll run a content prompt for each website section. Then I will review and refine, and I don't recommend skipping that step. I never take ChatGPT's exact output for a few reasons, but the main one is that we know Google does not like content that is low quality or unoriginal, or that's not just genuinely helpful. So let's say your client is also a financial technology company. I actually looked this up. There are thousands of fintech startups created each year, and probably most of them are getting help from AI to write their website content. So you don't want to be one of the companies that copies and pastes the chat GPT output for help me write a one paragraph about section, for example. So if you're responsible for the copy, you want to take everything that you recorded from your kickoff workshops or questionnaire and combine that with what you've gained from your own touch points with the client and refine the copy to make sure it's super clear that it's aligned with the whole website vision and brand and just that it really captures the client. Of course, if you're not responsible for the copy, you just want to guide the client on what is the criteria for high quality, high performing website content. And side note, this is one of the reasons why, at least right now and in the near future, I don't really see AI as an existential threat to web designers. Of course, I use AI tools to speed up and improve every major touch point in my process, but I really see our biggest value as designers in, first of all, knowing which tools to use, knowing how to use them well, and thirdly, probably most importantly, understanding how to weave together the output of all of those tools really strategically and cohesively. By the end of this step, I've got a full copy document that also acts as a low fidelity wireframe. So I don't usually need anything higher fidelity before jumping into design, but if it's a larger website, I will have created a sitemap during this step, but for a pretty standard marketing business showcase website, I don't usually feel that a sitemap is necessary. All right, so then I was finished with the first phase and next came the part that most of us designers look forward to the most, which is designing. I always start with the homepage, pretty sure most people do. And for this client, I created two homepage options. So the two concepts were not wildly different in terms of overall look and feel. That's because like I mentioned, this client had previously gone through a basic branding process and they wanted the website to align to that established look and feel. Also in the kickoff questionnaire, uh, we had identified a few examples of sites that they really loved and I felt like those examples plus their brand really pointed me in a pretty clear visual direction. So I presented two options that really showed different ways of styling the various sections, as well as that presented the sections in a different order to kind of emphasize different information. And when I presented these, I made sure to really explain how I thought that both of the different visual design options would potentially influence how website visitors would take in the information and how that could impact their experience. When we reviewed the different homepage concepts, we also checked in about product graphics and animations. You can see I had a chart that mapped out the key moments or interactions that I needed to capture and how I thought that we could present a simplified version to their audience. After the homepage has been nailed down, the additional pages, assuming that it's a relatively standard marketing website, usually come together pretty quickly, especially if like me, you mostly use Reloom sections. This is the point in the project when I will document micro interactions and really try to get everything pixel perfect. But once the full prototype of the website is done and approved, we move into Webflow. So for this website, I delegated the Webflow build so that I could start strategy for the next project. I also hired an animation expert to weave together the graphics that I had created since 
animation isn't really my specialty. I usually have a very specific vision for the animations and I will create the assets, but I prefer to get help putting them together. After this, I am checking in with my Webflow developer and the animator to review the work and get it fully client ready. But my most active involvement is during the first phases of the project. Once everything has come together, every item on the quality assurance go live checklist has been accounted for. I walk the client through the Webflow website and dashboard. We make sure they're comfortable with how to navigate things, etc., and then the site is ready to go live. So we talked through a lot and we did it pretty quickly. Here's a review of what we covered. And for those of you who have been through similar processes, you'll know that each step has its own subset of checklists and standard operating procedures, starter files. I hope it was helpful to get a little window into some of mine today. And after every project wraps up, there's pretty much always some change I make to my design and client management processes just to make things a little bit more efficient. And I want to say that I look forward to a day when my SOPs are done, but honestly, with the pace that software is improving and new tools are coming out, that probably will never happen. And I think I'm okay with that. I hope you found this helpful and see you next time.